In today's episode of the Midweek Ramble, I'll be sharing with you the seven step approach I plan on using to develop and nurture my knitting aesthetic. If that sounds like just your cup of tea or something you've been wanting to try yourself, grab a cup of something cozy and let's get started. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. For today's video, we are kind of embarking a little bit on a journey here. I received an email in the Wool Needles Hands tip line not long ago, and it's one of several to the same effect that I've received in the past, and it was asking about how to determine or develop your knitting style or aesthetic. And I thought this was really interesting and something I've never really considered for myself in the past. Now I feel like I have a pretty good sense of what my style is, but I've never determined that style, I've never pointed it out to myself, and I've never really developed that style. It kind of just is what it is because I see things that I like and maybe I knit those things or purchase those things at a store and then that's pretty much it. But I've never really taken the time to develop my own knitting aesthetic or style and then definitely have never done anything to nurture that or maintain consistency with that or cohesiveness or anything like that. And so I wanted to kind of go down that rabbit hole a little bit and I came up with seven steps that I would like to follow in order to do that. And I'm gonna share those steps with you guys here today and just know that I am not a pro, I've not done this before, this is very new and these are very experimental steps and I'm sure that this seven step process could develop and change into an eight step process or a five step process or who knows. But I'm going to start with these seven steps. Now I've taken quite a few notes on this particular subject and I've done a lot of brainstorming to think about how I would like to approach this. I'm going to share them with you and I hope that you can take away from this video and from these seven steps your own approach to developing your own personal creative knitting aesthetic or style. And at the very end of this episode, in fact, I'm going to be sending you off with a little homework. And this homework is something that you're going to be submitting to me that I will then share with our community here at Wool Needles Hands on the next episode of the Midweek Ramble, which will be next week. Definitely stick around to the end to find out more about that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into my seven step plan that I have for helping me develop my own personal knitting aesthetic. The first step that I'm designating in my seven step process here is to define my vision for my knitting aesthetic. What is it when I think about my ideal knitting style? And that could be not only my knitting style, but my knitwear style, all of that kind of comes together in this one idea. What is my vision for that? And I'm thinking that the best way that I'm gonna go about doing this is by creating kind of like a brainstorm or a mind map. Now, like I mentioned, I'm a former educator of 10 years. This is very much a page right out of my educator handbook in terms of how I taught kids to map out ideas and brainstorm ideas. And it's just how my mind operates. It's easy for me to do mind maps and brainstorms to help me get an idea of a particular concept to help me branch out from a central concept. And that's exactly what I would wanna do with this. So I would wanna imagine this vision. And if I were to create a mind map or a brainstorm, imagine a web, if you will, perhaps the word my aesthetic or my knitting aesthetic vision would be right in the middle. And then branching out from that central idea would be all of the things that I think about when it comes to my ideal knitting aesthetic. Perhaps it's cozy, perhaps it's tailored, perhaps it's classic clean lines, maybe I like really rustic fabrics. This is essentially the overall look and feel that you want to convey with your knits, with your knitwear, and even with the process as a whole. I also really don't want to forget when I'm doing this brainstorm that I want to keep in mind my own style preferences that I already have pretty well established, things that I know I like, because that's very important. You need to stick to what you know you like and feel good in and feel comfortable in. So those are really important to include in this vision. You also want to incorporate your lifestyle, the climate where you live, 
live, what sorts of things you like to do, how you spend your time. Do you work from home or do you work in an office? Because all of this is going to be part of that overall design or knitting aesthetic. I imagine myself, upon completing this brainstormer mind map, highlighting keywords that I notice popping up a lot because that's how our minds work. We really kind of follow common themes and common threads in our thoughts. And when we see those keywords popping up a lot, like rustic or cozy or textured or muted or whatever it is, you want to highlight those because that is your psyche telling you what it wants and telling you what speaks to it. And it's really important to listen to that. So having a highlighter on hand, if you're doing this paper pencil, that's definitely the kind of gal I am, is really good advice for this particular part. But that is my step number one, defining my vision for my aesthetic style before diving into any kind of external inspiration. Okay, step number two, and I feel like this is the next logical step, and I, I may be wrong, but to me it just feels right. After doing all of this brainstorming and mind mapping, I feel like the next logical step would be to synthesize all of that that I have, again, before diving any, into any external inspiration, is to synthesize everything on my mind map and give it a label. Just, you know, and, and that label can definitely change. It's a working title, if you will, for your knitting aesthetic. So maybe you notice lots of things like cozy and rustic and wholesome and earthy and bucolic and things that kind of speak to that country chic or cabin core or cottage core. I don't even know. Y you can come up with your own thing. It's really up to you, but giving all of that stuff a label, synthesizing all of those ideas and the development in that first step and giving it a label is definitely going to help push you forward in the process of developing your aesthetic. And if it helps with just one thing, the one thing it's definitely going to help with is searching for inspiration and have results that may just fit with what you're looking for with that defining vision that we created in step one. So if anything, I would definitely create a label so you have a search term, a jumping off point to begin your inspiration collection. Which leads me to step number three, and this is the fun part. This is where you really get to gather all of that inspiration. Now, it's easy for somebody to say to you, find inspiration everywhere, not just online. Go out in nature, go on a hike, go look at architecture and take photos and all of these things. And all you're thinking to yourself, if you're anything like me, is when am I gonna have the time to go on a hike and look at architecture and go out into the world outside of all the other things that I'm doing? And so if that is something that you wanna do, you wanna go out into the field and find inspiration for your aesthetic mood board that would be kind of the culminating activity at the end of all of this, try to incorporate it in your day-to-day -day stuff that you're already doing if you can't set aside the extra time. But we are living in an age where so many things are available to us online. And don't shy away from the inspiration that is available to you digitally online. It is completely acceptable to find all of that inspiration online. That's why they create you know, platforms like Pinterest. So in this step, my plan is to gather my inspiration. Now, it's pretty easy to gather physical you know, inspiration if you look around your home and the things that you already own. For example, this cardigan right here was one of them. This is a cardigan I bought at a place called Target. If you're in the U.S., you know what Target is. If you're not, Target is kind of like, um, it's like an everything store. It's fantastic. And they always have really good cardigans. And this is just a cotton cardigan I purchased from Target several years ago. Gosh, I don't even know how long ago. This cardigan is one of my favorites. It's a cozy throw-in cardigan. I wear it all the time when the weather cools down. And it's definitely something that speaks to the more casual nature of my vibe, of my aesthetic. And so I pulled this out and I thought this would be a good one to start with. It kind of gives me a jumping off point for, you know, cozy knit style, if that ends up being, you know, part of my vision. So you can pull something like that out. Maybe there's something in terms of your tools or things that you use where the textile speak to you, the color speaks to you. Um, this is a project bag that I use from Jezebel B, and I recently picked this up, but I would say within eight months. And I love it because of this color, because of the kind of rustic elegance of the nice supple leather, because of the boho shape. All of this. I love this. And I feel like when it comes to my own personal style, this is an already established item that I have in my possession that really speaks to that. And so keeping that in mind, 
is important for helping me when I'm synthesizing all of these things together to kind of help develop, you know, that aesthetic. And, and again, like looking at colors and textures and all of that is really important. Another place where you can get really great inspiration are books, magazines. These are things that we have lying around, especially books that have knitwear in them. So maybe you subscribe to Lina Magazine, maybe you subscribe to Pom Pom Quarterly, maybe you don't subscribe to anything. I don't, and you don't need to. But if you have something that shows really awesome knitwear in action, you know, photos, really lovely editorial photos that can help you kind of determine, is this your aesthetic here? If not, keep flipping. Maybe this isn't for you. But maybe you see something and you're like, yes, this is way more my vibe. I love that pop of color. Who knows? But having something like this is a really great way to help give you some additional inspiration. Now you can flag this with post notes, you can do whatever you want with it, you can take photographs of the photographs so that you can upload them to some kind of an online Google Drive, depending on how you want to save this inspiration, but this is a really good place to look as well. I also feel like Finding things that you own, that you love. Um, this is not only something I wear all the time, but it's just something I love. It's a hat, it's a hat, okay? I love this hat. I do wear this hat all the time. I've had it for years and years. It's kind of dirty. I wore this hat when I was mowing the pasture up in Winnemucca, Nevada, where my mom has a house. I mowed the pasture on a riding lawnmower and I wore this hat. I wear this hat when I'm trying to look cute and go out and do fun things. So it's not just my lawn mowing hat, but it's an important hat to me. And I feel like the style of this hat really speaks to my own personal tastes. I love the color. I love the fabric of the hat. You can see how dirty it is. So having little things like that, that you love, that give you kind of a warm, fuzzy feeling. All of this kind of works as inspiration. And all of this you can find in your own home. So for step number three, I will be focusing on gathering inspiration. Now step number four is going to be a spinoff of step number three. At least that's kind of how I visualized it when I came up with this seven step plan. And that would be to develop my own signature color palette. Not exactly sure how I'm going to do this. I have some ideas and I will be sharing those with you in future. But I know that it's really important when you're coming up with an overall theme or aesthetic or style to have a really nice cohesive color palette. Now that could be a color palette of three colors or a color palette of seven colors. You want to keep it somewhat limited. You don't want it to be over the top or else it becomes kind of confusing and moves off in lots of different directions. And a limited color palette is something that you can at a glance, discern the vibe. And that's kind of what I'm going for here. So I wanna develop a really solid and cohesive color palette based on the inspiration that I gathered in step three. Maybe it's something like earthy gray tones, maybe really rich leathery brown colors. Maybe you have a yarn in your stash that's a really lovely sage green and it just speaks to you and you want this to be part of your color palette. Maybe you're noticing that the majority of the photos you're saving on your Pinterest board have a series of colors that just keep reoccurring. Those are going to be part of your color palette. You don't have to stay inside this box that you're creating, and I don't plan on staying inside this box I'm creating all the time. I plan on using this as a box that I can come back to where I know I feel comfortable and good, and I know that the things inside of this box fit my preferences, because I also know that it's going to give me the confidence confidence I need to branch out and step out of my comfort zone every so often. Similar to developing a color palette, this next step, step number five, is going to be where I develop a texture profile. Now, when I look at different knitting patterns, my eye is drawn to knits that have texture. Now, me as a knitter and where I am in my knitting journey, I may not always be interested in knitting things with texture, but when it comes to the style that speaks to me, knits with texture definitely speak to me. And so I wanna create a profile of textures that I do like, things that I would be interested in wearing on my body at least, because that's going to help guide my project planning and thinking about how I'm going to choose knitting patterns in the future. And so a really good place to play around with developing this profile is to simply get a knitting stitch pattern book, something like this one. This is one that I really love. I've had this for quite some time. If you're interested, I will link it down below in the description box. 
but this is a fantastic one. And it doesn't have just simple knits and pearls. There are cables in here. There are lace patterns in here. There are some really simple patterns and definitely some more complex patterns. And something that you could do is get some post-it notes, maybe limit yourself, I don't know, to 10 post-it notes in the beginning. Give yourself 10 post-it notes. Flip through the book and allow yourself to put your post-it notes on different pages that highlight textures that speak to you. Give yourself 10. If you give yourself a whole stack of post-it notes, you might find that you have every single page in the book highlighted. You need to limit yourself. But finding these options in a book like this, like a stitch pattern dictionary, is really a good place to go. You can also search for things like this on Pinterest. You can do all kinds of things digitally to help give you some ideas of various different kinds of stitch patterns. You can look through the knitwear that you already have in your wardrobe. Funny enough, I tend to have lots of cardigans that I really, really love to wear and a lot of them have this fisherman's rib texture and I love that texture. And I'm a little nervous about starting a project with that texture, but the more that I see it in my wardrobe, the more that I realize I need to give it a shot. And so that would be a texture that I would add to kind of my overall knitting aesthetic profile or mood board that I'm very drawn to that fisherman's rib texture. So these are some things you wanna consider is to collect some ideas of textures and stitch patterns that really speak to you because that is going to also help guide your project planning and project choosing in the future. Step number six here is a big one, especially because if we're talking about knitting, we're talking about yarn. If you find that most of the things that inspire you are rustic and artisanal and country and wholesome or whatever, you're definitely going to want to stick with yarns that are more rustic in nature. Maybe fiber contents that are a little bit more hardy and less refined. However, if you're noticing that your inspiration is leaning a lot more classic and more refined, you're going to want to stick to fine wool fibers like merinos and cashmeres, and you might even want to do something like silk. So these are all things that you're going to want to consider when it comes to developing that overall knitting aesthetic. Think about the yarns that speak to all of the inspiration you've developed and gathered thus far. I would would love nothing more than to find a great place to go and just explore all kinds of different yarns, but that can be really difficult. Online shopping is really helpful when you're going to various different yarn retailers because lots of them give great detailed images and descriptions that can give you an idea of what these yarns feel like. But of course, another really great place to go is the stash you already possess. From your stash, you can pull out a few different kinds of yarns that really speak to you, that not only speak to you visually, but speak to you in terms of how they feel in your hand. You're going to have yarns in your stash that don't fit into the aesthetic you're developing here. I know that I'm going to have yarns that don't fit into whatever aesthetic I develop through this process, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that you need to get rid of those yarns, although it might be a really good jumping off point to establishing a de-stash, but a really good place to look for yarns that speak to you and speak to this vision that you created in the beginning is your own stash. You have lots going on over there, and it's really important to give it the time of day to really root around in there and see which yarns do you have on hand that really drive home that vision that you thought of in the very beginning of this process. Now, my final step here, and the last thing that I plan to do after I have walked through all of these steps and worked through all of these steps, is to synthesize all of this and distill it down into a limited mood board. Now, if you're not familiar, a mood board is a place where you display photos and items and swatches that all speak to or help develop a particular style. Now, a mood board could be for anything. It could be interior design. It could be exterior design. It could be your own personal style. It could be anything, really. But with what we're talking about today, it's going to be my knitting aesthetic. And I really want my mood board to be, and this is a key word here, limited. I don't want a mood board with all kinds of potential for all kinds of different pictures and colors and swatches and things like that. For me personally, I find that that can be overwhelming. You might be different and you might want your mood board to just be full of different sources of inspiration and pieces of inspiration and that's fantastic. 
But my key here for this step number seven is to challenge myself to boil all of this down into a limited mood board, a mood board with limited numbers of photos, limited colors featured in a color palette, limited texture options, so that I can look at it and get a really quick idea of what the overall aesthetic is. And going through the process of challenging myself to keep it limited is only going to help me understand that aesthetic and how it applies to me that much more. So that's going to be my goal for number seven. And a really good place to do mood boards if you're not interested in doing a physical mood board on a piece of poster board or something like that in your home would be to go to Canva. Um, I'm not sponsored by Canva. I use Canva, but it, I'm just letting you know that it's a fantastic tool if you want to create really fun collage mood boards. It's a really good place to go. Otherwise, you can do it however you want. If you're tech savvy and you're pretty good on a computer, you have no problem figuring out how to create your own digital mood board. But that's going to be my final step in this process. It's kind of my culminating activity after I go through each of these steps in the seven step process is to create my final knitting aesthetic mood board or knitting aesthetic board whatever you want to call it now I know that was a lot and I know that there's a lot to think about when it comes to all of these steps that I shared with you today and again these are just the steps I plan on taking to develop my knitting aesthetic and knitting style that overall idea what I do with this and how I use each of these steps is coming. I plan on sharing all of that with you in detailed videos in the very near future and you're definitely going to want to stick around here at the Wool Needles Hands channel to find out exactly how to watch those. But in the case of this video and that homework I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I want to throw the ball into your court. Hit the ball into your court. I want to put the ball in your court and ask you to try this yourself. Now, I have yet to embark on this seven step process and create my own knitting aesthetic mood board, but that's what I'm going to be doing between now and the next episode of the Midweek Ramble, which is next Wednesday. So what I'm asking you to do is to do the same thing yourself. You can follow the seven steps that I lay out here, which I will list down below in the description box, or you can come up with your own steps. But the point is, is that you submit to me via email at woolneedleshands at gmail.com your knitting aesthetic aesthetic mood board so that I can pull a few to share on that next episode. I will also be selecting at random from those of you that submit your knitting aesthetic mood board to me, a winner who will receive a couple of goodies. I will be sending off what I have left of the yarn that I used to knit my hollow shawl by Melody Hoffman. You guys remember this really gorgeous shawl that I knit with fiber for the people cotton merino. This is the watercolor way. It is absolutely gorgeous. I have about as much as you would need right here to knit the same size of the hollow shawl that I knit. Check out the video that I linked to at the top of the screen if you would like to see that project. And then I will also be sending off a Wool Needles Hands coffee mug, the one needle to rule them all coffee mug with the Wool Needles Hands logo on the back as a little fun prize, if you will, for a lucky person chosen at random who submits to me their knitting aesthetic mood board. Again, you don't have to participate. If you do, I think that's awesome. I would love to have you participate. Maybe you want to participate, but you don't want to submit anything. That's also completely fine. I hope that this inspires you to give it a try because I think that there's something kind of satisfying and fulfilling about developing a style profile or a knitting aesthetic mood board to help kind of remind you that these are the things that I'm into. This is what I'm drawn to typically, and I want to try and stay with that and be consistent consistent about that when it comes to choosing future projects. Again, and like I emphasized earlier, you don't have to stay inside that box. But if you have a box to return to, it's like having a base of operations. When you have a base of operations, you can branch out every once in a while because you know you have a safe space to come back where you know you're going to feel comfortable. That's kind of why I'm embarking on this journey. And I really, really hope that you join me for this. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're feeling inspired. I hope that there was something here you were able to take and find value in. And if that is the case, definitely don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It helps way more than you know. Subscribe if you would like to see more content from me here at Wool Needles Hands, as well as additional content surrounding this particular 
journey that I'm on. And then don't forget to click the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever the videos go live so you can be there early for all the action. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Until I see you on Sunday's episode of the podcast, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.